Okay, the purpose of this video is to show you how to simplify a complex rational expression. It might be a good idea to define what a complex rational expression is before we start to do that. Basically, a complex rational expression is having a, an addition or a subtraction uh, of two rational expressions divided by an addition or subtraction of two rational expressions. Now remember what a rational expression is. It's basically just fractions but using polynomials instead of um, numbers, just straight numbers. Okay, so how do we do that? One of the things that you probably want to consider when simplifying one of these complex rational expressions is that you need to factor each of the polynomials so that you can determine what are the common denominators for each of the individual rational expressions. Okay, so let's take a look at this. You know, I'm fond of saying that difficult problems are simple ones stacked together. This is a real good example of that. So let's look at this first denominator. It's 2x minus 2. And I, ca I can factor that to say 2 times x minus 1. Then I have my minus sign. This one's already factored, so let's leave that one alone. Let's go down to the two denominators now in the denominator of the larger complex rational expression. This denominator is already factored as well, so let's just leave that one alone. And then we'll notice that this one is a difference of squares. So let's factor that as x plus 1 x minus 1. I like this particular technique that I'm going to show you because it really kind of makes this a lot faster in terms of simplifying. What you need to do now is look at each one of the four denominators and ask yourself what is the common denominator for all four of the smaller denominators? So what is the lowest common denominator, the LCD, of all four small denominators. And you could probably figure out that it would be, you need to have a 2 in each one of these, and you need to have an x minus 1 and an x plus 1. So, what we're going to do now in order to solve this, or to make this a little bit simpler, is supply the missing denominators in each one. How do you do that? You multiply by 1. So in this one, for example, I'm missing just the x plus 1. So let's multiply by 1. That way we don't change, we don't change that expression, right? But we all of a sudden now have supplied the missing denominator. What's missing in this denominator? Well, a 2 is missing, so let's multiply by 2 over 2. Again, that's just multiplying by 1. It doesn't change this, but it does kind of supply a missing uh, lowest common denominator. And we're also missing an x plus 1, so let's do that as well. Let's look at this denominator down here. It's missing also a 2, so let's multiply by 2 over 2. And let's also multiply by the x plus 1. I just noticed something. I, just, I said that was an x plus 1. That's incorrect, isn't it? It should be x minus 1. So let me just go ahead and do that. Make that quick correction. If you were a little confused when I did that, that's good. That means that you're thinking correctly. So now look at this denominator is 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Same here, same here. Now we just have to finish this last one. Looks like we just need the 2. So let's multiply by 2 over 2. I now have the lowest common denominator for all four of these denominators. And here's the neat trick. Once you have the lowest common denominator, you get to cross them out. Now let's rewrite what's left over in the numerators. 
here we have 3 times x plus 1 minus 2 times 1 or 2 times x minus 1. That's just written straight across up here. Down here we've got 2 times 1 or 2 times x plus 1 plus 2x. That's a lot simpler than what we had going over here. Now let's continue on. Let's continue on. Can I start factoring out ones here? No, I can't. I basically have to get everything in a multiplied form. Okay, so let's do that. Let's add, let's go ahead and distribute. I get 3x plus 3 minus 2x plus 2 over 2x plus 2 plus 2x. Now why did I do that? What I want to do is add, add up all my like terms and see if there's anything that's factorable after I added up everything. So let's try and see what happens. 3x minus 2x is just 1x. Plus 3 plus 2 is plus 5. In my numer denominator I have 2x plus 2x which is just 4x and then plus 2. Is there anything that I can factor out here? Well actually there is. I can factor out my denominator but I can see pretty much right off the bat that it's not going to help me to simplify the rest of the expression. But this is probably the best way to leave my final answer. x plus 5 over 2 times the quantity 2x plus 1 is the simplified version of my original problem. And if I just plugged in a number here for x, you would see that these are equivalent. The first and my last answer are equivalent. Now there's one more thing I have to do with these. I have to find what are called restrictions. What are restrictions? Basically they're, they're x's that will cause any denominator to equal zero and you don't want that to happen because when you divide by zero you're doing something called uh, undefined. You're leading to an undefined answer. So let's look at this one first. What would cause this to be equal to zero? The way I figure that out is just say 2x plus 1 cannot equal 0 and then I just go ahead and solve this. So x cannot equal a negative 1 half here. Let's keep going a little bit further up. What about here? Looks like x cannot equal negative... oh no that's okay that's alright. Let's keep going up here. If I look into these denominators, it looks like x can equal negative 1 or positive 1. And if I look up here, looks like that takes care of all my restrictions. Okay, so here's my final answer, plus my restrictions. I hope that helped. If you have any questions, watch some of my other videos, and hopefully they'll be answered.